everyone, it's Michelle from Scrap Secrets again, and I wanted to show you the mini album that I just finished assembling. It's not decorated or anything, but I used the Mini Books Cricut Project Cartridge, and I used the cuts from page 15. It's the vertical mini album, and I cut them everything at 7 inches. And if you notice, I have a bunch of different numbers written down for each one of the cuts for all of my albums. What I did was I loaded the mat into my Cricut and then I hit fit to page and then I hit every single one of the icon buttons. The reason for that is each thing cuts at a different fit to page level. So there's some that even if I just wanted to use it for another project, I could see exactly how big it was and I didn't have to do this over again. It's actually going to be beneficial when I start mixing things for projects. Um, so when I did that, the recommended size, see this little red bubble here? That gives you the recommended size to cut it at. It's that size or larger. So the front cover, the largest it will cut is 7 inches. So I made all of my cuts at 7 inches. So the first thing that I did was I took white cardstock and I just started cutting out all of the pieces. So because there are 15 cuts, I wanted to try to save paper. So what I did was I made a couple of cuts on the page. So I'll tell you the cuts that I did. For sheet 1, I did vertical 1 and 2. Um, when you first cut it, that'll cut... So you know, your Cricut mats like this and you load it in like this so your paper's here, it'll cut the top part as the cover. So then you have this space that is unused. So what you do is you take it off and you flip it over like this so that this part's at the top and the Cricut can cut that now and you cut, um, cut vertical two at seven inches and then you can get two cuts on the paper. Um, so for sheet two, I did vertical three, four, and then the cut for eight. Um, you had to, fl you three and four will fit on the top, then you have to flip it for cut eight. Sheet three, you do vertical cuts five, nine, and 14, and for cut five and nine will fit on the top. 14, when you flip the paper, make sure that cut nine is on the top because there's a wider border there, so you can cut 14. Sheet 4, vertical 6, 7, and 12, you flip it for cut 12. Sheet 5 was vertical cuts 10 and 13, you had to cut 10 and then flip it for 13. Sheet 6 is vertical 11, sheet 7 was vertical 15. So instead of using 15 sheets of paper, I used about half of that, I used 7 sheets. So I still do have some paper left over. But the reason that I wanted to do it all in white at first was because I didn't want to waste pattern paper. And B, I wanted to see what it was going to look like. The pattern paper that I used isn't double-sided. So I'll show you the paper that I used. I used this die cuts with a view stack called Nana's Nursery. It's a baby girl stack. I'll just show you some of the papers real quick. So cute. They're pinks and yellow, uh, pinks and oranges and greens mostly. So those are the ones that I used. And then I'll show you. These are some of the cuts that I didn't use and I used some of them and then other ones I didn't because the pattern paper that I used wasn't double sided. So what I did was I picked a pattern paper for the front and then I picked a pattern paper for the back. So I cut everything once and then I used the flip key to cut for the back side of it with a different pattern paper. So there's a couple different cuts on here. Um, if you notice, there are some half moons and then some rectangles. And they're in ascending or descending order, however you want to look at them. Um, so what I did was that I cut one of the rectangles and one of the half moons on one piece of pattern paper. So each, there's four different, there's actually eight different pattern papers that I used, but I used four for the front and four for the back. Um, so one of these rectangles is going to have the same exact pattern papers as one as the ha of the half moons, and I'll show you those. Um, so what I did was I loaded the pattern paper, picked two of the cuts. I usually picked one of the larger ones from the rectangles and then one of the smaller uh, ones from the half moon shaped ones. Cut those out and then loaded another pattern paper onto my sheet and hit the flip key and then cut those, cut the other two. 
Um, one of the things that I did notice, I have some patterned paper that has the glitter on it. Use the multi-cut button, put it, put you set your blade to six, and then use the multi-cut. When I didn't do that, sometimes it didn't cut all the way through. It cut enough where I could kind of rip it, but it was worked better when I used the multi-cut function. So those are just a couple things that I found when I was doing my first album. So, um, every cut I used except for one, there's this little envelope cup cut on here, but I didn't really like the way that it looks because it kind of it opens like this instead of opening like an envelope like this so I don't know I may keep this and use this for another album or use this on something else um, it's cute but I just didn't think it looked right in the album so let me show you what I did so here's the album here the front cover was the first piece that I cut and it's cut at the seven inches like everything else and then I cut the binding so the first thing I did was go through my paper stack and pick the paper that I wanted as my cover. Um, so I picked this with all the l words about little girls on it, uh, cut that, and then um, I went through and I picked all different pattern papers to cut things out of. So this is one of the pockets, and I decided to use the white... I didn't use the white liner on this one because... When I flipped it over, or maybe I, I'm sorry, yes I did use, I think I did use the white liner on this one. Oh no, I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't use the white liner, getting myself all confused. Um, I didn't because this right here was just the back of this paper, it was just white. So what I did was I just took another piece of pattern paper and stuck it down and, um, just line the back of it instead of cutting another sheet it would have um, it wouldn't have cut out on the, pa the piece of paper that I had left over so I just stuck it down it was really easy to do so then this I took all of my patterned papers and inked them around the edges with some Tim Holtz distress ink picked raspberry so it just kind of helps everything be more cohesive and it also takes away from the white edges because when you cut out this paper has a white core and it has a white back so this just helps it and if I didn't get it lined up exactly evenly it still has a nice pink border on the outside so there's the first cut these all have the white pieces in the middle so what I did was I put tape and I found this worked better than putting the tape on the pattern paper to put the tape on the white original cut and then stick the pieces down and then do the same thing for the back just line that white paper instead of lining the pattern paper so then this is my second, and then this, and then this is the last, and then this cut, if you can see the little white here, it actually has cutouts for a photo. So that's a photo mat, and then the back has them as well. You can see right there, there's the cut for the photo mat. So, so you'll notice these pattern papers are all the same as the ones that I did for this square, or the rectangle ones. And these are all lined with the white. This one is too. This one looks like the other cut. It just has the fancy edge. And then there's the polka dots. There's some cherries. And this cherry it, piece of paper is an envelope. And I didn't use the liner for that. So that's unlined. Um, I did cut the back. Uh, I just took another piece of pattern paper, hit the flip button, and then cut the back off of uh, cut another sheet, glued it, scored it, and then glued it down. Um, I kind of messed up a little bit on, with lining it up. It's really, really difficult to do. What I would suggest if you're going to do that is just put glue on part of this, stick it down, and then put the rest on. Because when you put glue all across like I did, um, it makes it very, very difficult to get back up. So I just took some washi tape and to hold the edges down and to cover up some of the, the spots where the paper tore a little bit. Um, I just edged it with some of the pink polka dot washi tape. And I'm also going to put some things here so it'll make it a little bit sturdier. I didn't use the white cover in between because I didn't know how that was going to be. It's a little, it's not flimsy, but it's just flexible. Um, but it's fine. It'll, it's sturdy enough that it'll hold up to pages being turned. 
And then for the binding, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I was going to get binder rings, or I have some binder rings, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I found some green ribbon. This, there's some green in the cover. So I wanted to pull out some of the green because on this you can really see the pink and the orange, but the green not so much. So I just took it and threaded a ribbon through each and every hole four different times and then just tied a knot on the ends. I'll probably put some more, some other ribbon on here. I'm not really sure. Dress it up just a little bit. So that's my mini album so far. Um, all the edges, ha again, have been inked with uh, the picked raspberry distress ink just so that it covers up any of the white. Um, I will probably decorate it with cuts from um, Baby Steps and New Arrival. I also have a bunch of baby stamps, so I'm going to put some things in there. I don't think I'm going to add anything because I've already tied everything, so I don't think that there's really much room to add anything once I put some embellishments on there. Probably put some quotes or some little pictures and things on there. Um, and maybe put some photo mats on there. But I'll have dimensions for pictures, what kind of pictures you can put in this album because I know that um, there's a couple smaller pieces, but there are some larger ones that you can fit photos on. And then um, I may also do a waterfall feature here or on the front or an arrival um, notice or something like that. So I'm going to dress it up a little bit, but I just wanted to show you how it came out. I think it came out really, really cute. It was very time consuming to do, um, and I don't know whether I made it more difficult by adding the extra layers on here, but I feel like the pages are a lot sturdier having those three layers versus having one piece of pattern paper. So um, it's up to you, whatever you feel like doing, but I think it's just a little bit sturdier having those three sheets of cardstock. So thank you guys for watching, and um, if you have any suggestions or things for me to do with this, definitely feel free to leave comments because I'm really not sure what exactly or how I'm going to embellish it. So if anybody has any suggestions, I welcome them, and I will make another video and show you when it's all done. So thanks for watching. Uh, feel free to leave comments, and I will see you guys later. Bye!